Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another Why I Use Studio One tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the usefulness of transforming your MIDI track into audio. And what this is very useful for is if you have a synth like Dune or Spire or Serum where it's got all the oscillators are just going full mode and you ain't got enough gigahertz, you ain't got enough megahertz. You need to find a way to download more power for your computer so that it doesn't get bogged down in this stuff. Well, aside from, you know, calling India and figuring out one of their wonderful tech supports on how to download more megahertz, what you can do is you can transform your audio track. Now, this is similar to Ableton's freeze feature, except it's better because, well, it is. So <laughs> here's what it does. So all you do is you click on, right click on transform track and you get to choose do you want to render your inserts? All these effects over here. We've got a distortion that's enabled and like a mix knob. Do we want to render those? If they're not taking up all my CPU cycles and my megahertz, uh, I think we can keep those. Do we want to preserve the instrument track state? Yes, keep that. Because if you want to go back to the original track, you want that checked. So do always pretty much keep this checked. Just don't even worry about it. Keep it checked. Remove instrument doesn't really matter whether you keep this or not if when the instrument isn't even hitting any notes it's still taking up CPU time you can select this it's fine because when you you can always go back to the MIDI track which will show you and it will bring the instrument back no matter what auto tail is useful and the reason for that is because in this sound what you'll notice is it has reverb on it or rather, it doesn't have reverb on it, because it should, but it doesn't. Now it does. So there's reverb on it. And what's going to happen is, because the way transforming this MIDI to audio works, it's going to transform each one of these blocks into an audio section. And if it just cuts off right there, that reverb tail on those last few notes is going to sound very unnatural. So what we do is we want to keep that auto tail selected and then we'll automatically create a tail of the necessary length to sound natural for that block. So watch what happens. We're just going to render these and transform them right now. So cool. Now you'll notice that there's still like little MIDI things in there. And if you click and you look at it in terms of audio, they're there, but you can't adjust them. This is straight up just an audio sample. Can't do anything else with it. It's just an audio sample. You can detect transients and stuff like that. And you can stretch it and cut it and slice it and bop it and beep it. You can do whatever you want. Okay. And you'll notice there's these tails in here, which uh, will naturally decay out. So if we listen to the sound now, We've rendered the instrument to audio. We still have control over our inserts, and we have control over our send as well. If your send was on when you rendered this track, the send reverb would not be on it. And that's the fundamental difference between transforming audio versus bouncing audio. When you bounce the track, it'll bounce it with any accompanying reverbs on it to a new uh, audio track. And so, you know, we've got our audio thing here, and let's listen to it. So it's cool. It's like, you know, it's everything's playing. I'm not really sure why that's doing what it did. Technically, this should be able to play in the front. I guess my Y key no longer works. Anyway, so what you could do is is it, it keeps the tails of the original song, of the original kind of section laid out. And that's just a really beneficial thing to have. But say you get to a point in your song where you need to go back to the original kind of format that you had. Well, what you can do is you can just right-click again, go to Transform Back to Instrument Track. and you get your original MIDI. Now, say for example you, you know, rendered your uh, you rendered your inserts as well.
See what happens? The inserts are gone because you rendered them. You no longer have them. But if you want to go back to your inserts, you can just transform it. And then you have your in your original track. So this, um, I actually don't use this as much as just bouncing audio, but it certainly has its place. Um, you know, sometimes you want to just transform the track because it's easier to have it in audio or you want to freeze it to save CPU. That's really the biggest use of it that I have. Um, anyway, so, you know, hopefully that was helpful. If you guys have any more questions, let me know and uh, we'll uh, get on to the next one. See you guys around.